It's definitely interesting how the theme of old Roblox being infused with weird, abstract concepts has become a trend now for underground story games. Games such as DBD Man seem to have this strange, bizarre premise accompanied by a hint of old Roblox nostalgia. These games aren't so scary necessarily, they're just meant to be as weird as possible, but Octic's games, Containment and Confinement, seem to take the horror route. And they do it beautifully, I'll say. Honestly, it's been a while since I've seen a Roblox horror game so odd, weird, and yet fascinating as Containment and Confinement. They're a testament to how how original horror games can still be made on Roblox with the right creative mind. And while admittedly, these games weren't exactly thought-provoking in terms of themes or anything, they certainly did make me realize what separates a good Roblox horror game from a bad one. Where most horror games on Roblox try too hard to be either serious or scary, containment and confinement, like many games of their type, are full of abstract and unexplained elements, which prevents their game from trying to write a story that seems compelling, and when in reality, it comes off as cringeworthy. This also helps the scares seem heavier, as for most of the games, you're spending your time being confused, or trying to make sense of what everything means. And then boom, jump scare. It kinda works. You see, with modern Roblox horror games, they're always the same format. Go from point A to point B, go around looking for a specific item, and then a creature comes out of nowhere and chases you, and the cycle repeats. I want all of y'all to get out of my face. We just want you to go in. I don't want to go in. It's the same. Containment and confinement spend most of their time trying not to scare the player per se, but rather give them a feeling of uneasiness or confusion, with a little hint of familiarity sprinkled in there. In containment, you've been contained in a facility. It's not explained why, but you're here. Then there's this weird looking AI monster that chases you around when you're trying to solve a number puzzle. After making your way through the facility even more, you have to solve another number puzzle bit this time, but with this weird ball thing chasing you. Initially, I thought of containment as more of a puzzle game than a scary game. Yes, it was indeed a game that had lots of horror bits to it, but, but it never tried to make me jump or anything for the sake of entertainment. I already felt intrigued by the imagery that the game provided, and that's what drove me to press on. Rather than being bored by the large amounts of walking, it wasn't just get chased by the monster or kill the monsters that are in your way. It was solve the puzzle while a monster is in the background. Which is odd saying, but I can assure you that the monster was still a threat. It wasn't just a nuisance. Okay, but after this is when the game takes a dip. The ball melts and turns into this giant monster. And when this happened at first glance, I was like, what do we do? What do we do? This monster's like super strong. But yeah, it turns out that you do one thing at the end and it's just beat the fuck out of the monster with the crowbar. I honestly thought there would be more to it given how the rest of the game was, but there wasn't. It just kind of feels out of place almost, like the rest of the game is consistent, and the final act is just this by the books melee battle, where you do nothing but spam click. It just doesn't really fit well. And also, it doesn't help that if you die, you get kicked from the game and have to redo the entire thing. Anyways, Confinement is a sequel to Containment, and I'd say it's definitely a solid sequel. It did the standard Roblox horror game thing and split the game up into chapters, and it added a lobby where everybody can choose each chapter from. Which might help the game become more accessible for Roblox players, as that's what most players are accustomed to, rather than a menu nowadays. The game has the same premise as before, you're trapped in a facility and you're trying to escape. The first chapter has these weird-ass cutscenes that establish the strange tone of the game, and it's overall a nice introduction for setting up stuff. I enjoyed Confinement, more than the original to be honest. It expands on what was built before, and it improves on what was bad in the first place. Kind of. There's combat in this game, and I think it's done better than before, but that doesn't mean it's flawless. The monster being a fake dead body definitely got me the first time, and the combat that followed seemed proper. A wise man once told me that jump scares should be the start of something scary, that being the combat against the monster. At first you're taken back, to, to be honest, because you're like, oh shit, I forgot there's heal and dodge mechanics that I haven't used all game until now. After this though, the whole monster encounter thing does get a little bit stale when it keeps happening over and over again. It just doesn't have that same flair as it did the first time, and threat of monsters turns into more of an expectation than a moment of shock or fear. T anyways, the combat was super fun near the end, and I don't think that this aspect of the game bogged it down too much. This game being episodic is cool and all, but what might also bother a good amount of people is the lack of direction, or elaboration, at all. Like I said, these games' strength is their whole mysterious and confusing atmosphere. When you look at DVD Man, or even Containment itself, their story is mostly simple, I like to say. They're short games that are mostly over before you get bored. But in the larger game that Confinement is, you would like to think that they would at least add some lore for you to ponder about while you escape. In Instead, the game did what it did in the last installment, just add a bunch of random unsettling imagery. But it doesn't work quite as well here because, well, the game is a lot longer. It's not just about escaping, it's about experiencing the torment that the facility brings. So when little story bits are sprinkled in here that you think will go somewhere, 
and then they just don't, it gives the impression that the game is trying too hard to be objectively weird, rather than organically creating an atmosphere of one. God, I sound like I have a stick up my ass. Okay, well, Octic himself says that these games don't have any real lore, but his next game will, so that should be cool. Also, his next game shouldn't have any weird combat system either, so I think that's also nice. I'm looking forward to it. Octic, if you're watching this, I love your games, and I wish more people played, but given Roblox's current demographics, I suppose that might be a tad bit difficult. But please let it be known that your fans love you. I do too. And I hope this video gets more people to play your games. Anyways, uh, thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, share. It helps help the channel because this game's a little, uh, these two games are a little obscure. Love you all. Bye.